Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my Mock Reads 2024 video for historical fiction. So the Mock Reads, or Mock Reads Choice, or whatever I'm calling it really, is my response to the Goodreads Choice Awards, uh, which uh, culminate uh, every fall with all of the buzziest, most popular titles published uh, in the U.S., I believe it is, uh, that past year in various genres. Uh, and uh, they did away with, like, you know, the users of choice sort of thing. We all have to vote on the ballots that they provide if you want to participate. And I don't uh, always read the most buzzy books, but I like reading a little bit of front list. Uh, I find it difficult to do, and that's why I make these videos so early, <laughs> because I'm setting myself reading lists that I hope to, you know, be able to accomplish sometime before the fall. Uh, so I go ahead and uh, I have a couple of uh, favorite genres I come back to, uh, and I pick a handful, uh, usually really I only get to three of the books, uh, uh, on the list to read per year, and then I have this ranking blog post that I'll make hopefully before the Goodreads Choice Awards. And if any of these books are buzzy enough to get onto the Goodreads Choice Awards, it's always fun to play Miss Popularity and vote for them. But anyway, uh, yes, I've already made my general slash literary fiction video for this year, which I'll link down below, and now I'm on to historical fiction. Uh, hopefully making this short and sweet, especially because, uh, I have a tiny bit of a cold right now, or cold symptoms, I don't know, it's, <laughs> it always seems to just be like, you know, mix and matching or something, but it's not too bad, but I don't want it to get worse, so anyway, uh, I have a couple of books uh, to mention that I have mentioned previously on my anticipated reads list for 2024, and then I have a couple of new books, you know, to make videos new and exciting, so I'll start with briefly talking about uh, the books I've mentioned before. I'll start with City of Laughter by Temin Fruchter, which came out uh, in January. It is a book that technically has a contemporary component, but uh, the protagonist of contemporary times goes back to try to revisit her Jewish roots in Poland, uh, and then the narrative takes us back to the past to look into that time, and there might be some fabulous elements as well in the story. Uh, not entirely sure if I remember that part. Haven't read it yet, but maybe will soon. And the second book I'll talk about came out in March. It is In the Shadow of the Greenbrier by Emily Maktar. And this one's a little more, you know, straightforward, realist. Uh, I believe it all takes place in the past, although the time span um, is uh, pretty uh, e uh, extreme. Or I think it, well, extreme for Americans, I should say. I think it covers a lot of our history, or it specifically covers the history of a Jewish uh, West Virginian family that owns a particular property uh, and sees uh, those family members through uh, personal and uh, maybe broader events as well. But these next two books I heard about a little more recently, and for whatever reason, I have them out from the library right now, so maybe going to be more contenders uh, more likely to be contenders uh, for this mock reads uh, goal I have. <laughs> uh, so the first one I will hold up is The Phoenix Bride by Natasha Siegel, which takes place uh, uh, in the 17th century in England, uh, around the time of the plagues, uh, and one of the uh, major characters is a Portuguese uh, Jewish doctor who is treating people during this time. Uh, and this, in this period of history, it's when um, Jews are allowed to come back, or in some cases, you know, just uh, declare publicly as Jews again and not live in hiding uh, because of uh, the politics of the time. Uh, and uh, particularly, a lot of uh, Jews were trying to find sanctuary uh, from Spain and Portugal because of the Inquisition. Uh, and so that's uh, the dissection, I think, of what's going on here. Uh, I heard about this book, uh, I think, when uh, Natasha Siegel uh, wrote about it on the Jewish Book Council website, and I'm almost positive she mentioned The Weight of Ink by Rachel Kadish, which is a, another Jewish book that uh, covers Jewish activity in the same location, the same time. It's a book I absolutely adore. It was one of my uh, favorite books, uh, maybe my favorite book uh, the year I've read it. So in a 
way, I feel like this has a lot to live up to. I uh, hope I will uh, appreciate it as well. And the second book I will mention I heard of through Booktube and Eric Carl Anderson. This is Lublin by Manya Wilkinson. And I think, uh, lucky for me and my own interests, he had read this book uh, just recently before the Women's Prize was announced, uh, the long list, I should say, back in the day. Uh, and he and his friend Anna do um, several videos around the Women's Prize, and uh, first they start with uh, predicting which books will make it onto the long list, and then they move on from there, um, you know, into the short list and all of that. Uh, and so, yeah, I had no idea about this book. I don't think it was technically published in the U.S. at the time, although it became so, I think. Uh, uh, and this book, Lublin, is about uh, two uh, Jewish youngsters uh, in uh, Eastern Europe uh, traveling uh, from city to city or going on a journey of some sort, which could be very perilous, uh, where, you know, in Eastern Europe, a lot of the time Jews were restricted from freedom of movement. Uh, this takes place, I think, in the early 20th century. Uh, and it is a small publisher. In a way, you can tell by the cover, which I don't think is that great. But it was published by And Other Stories. Uh, they have, I think, offices both in New York and London, so I'm not sure how, you know, international publishing works. I just know I have it now <laughs> in the U.S. to read, and I'm very excited and very grateful to Eric for uh, pointing this book out to me. I'll link to uh, his video down below. And a final book I'll talk about, I don't think I'll get to it, but I'd like to talk about it because it is booktube ad uh, adjacent or direct as well. It's called The Trouble with Mrs. Montgomery Hearst by Katie Lumsden, who is a booktuber at Books and Things. She has been uh, particularly well-known for uh, reading and discussing Victorian literature, and now the historical fiction she publishes takes place in Victorian England. This is her second book. I haven't, in fact, read her first book. Um, uh, the Secrets of Hartwood Hall, which is <laughs> right over here, uh, which was a gothic Bronte-inspired tale. Uh, this one, I think, might be more Trollope-inspired, and it's more of a bigger cast and a little more comedic, I think. Uh, and it sounds really uh, interesting. It's coming out in July, but it is only coming out in the UK. I mean, that doesn't mean much nowadays. I could probably pretty easily get most books coming out in the UK. Like, But I, I don't really think I'm going to, you know, get to it this year because I, I don't give myself a lot of room to read front list because I have huge amounts of back list I also want to get to. But uh, it is on my radar and maybe I'll be getting to it someday. I hope so. And that about covers it for me now. I will uh, leave links to all the books I talked about listed down below and also reviews for uh, older books that I talked about and have read down below. And I'm weighing a few options about when you'll see me again on the channel because uh, as I am filming this tomorrow, I hope, if I feel well enough, that I will be going to the Gaithersburg Book Festival and, you know, creating a video for that. Uh, and I'm very, very excited. It's one of my big events of the year. And then I also do ultimately want to get to my uh, latest AM reading video this weekend. Uh, so it'll be one of the two of those. I'll give myself some, you know, wiggle room about what fits my, you know, schedule and so forth best. Uh, <laughs> I should probably be giving myself a little more leeway with this booktube stuff anyway. And being sick really does kind of bring that home. Not that I'm really all that sick, but... <laughs> Anyway, I hope you are all doing well and feeling well and healthy and enjoying your reading, front list or back list. And uh, thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time. <laughs>